This is the entire cast of the film Bazaar, which is hitting the theaters on 26 October. So can we have a loud round of applause for them? I mean, I've shot for a bit as well, but I don't know whether that's going to be part of the movie, but that's for a later day. <laughs> Anyways, um, for all of those of you who are wondering how this conversation over the next half an hour will pan out, well, I, I, all I can say is just stay tuned, right? This is going to be an interesting conversation. I'll try to make it interesting. Thank you so very much for being here, taking out the time to be part of this event. Uh, it's an event where you know, everybody's going get to get to know a little more about the film. Uh, and also, uh, how easy was it for all of you to come together, build your conviction in the concept, uh, and be a part of the project? Let's start with the basics. Uh, Sev, why did you say yes for the movie? <laughs> well, very basically, I loved the world of the movie but I also loved my role. Um, and there was something very strong, the way it's written, every scene was a challenge and a kind of item to perform. Um, I don't like leaving my house ever since I've had my son. Um, these are magical times to watch him grow. So to get to work, it's really nice if you have something remarkable that is um, taking you somewhere. So you go somewhere to an interesting place and and do a really good scene. So almost every scene in the film um, is a remarkable scene. But a movie on the stock market, Sev. Yes. Yeah. Um, what was your first reaction? My first reaction was, I think it should be easy to understand, because uh, I didn't want to be part of something which is too niche or too difficult to follow. So the stock market is, is a metaphor in the film. It's quite easy. It's really a, a tale about crossing the line. It's about money more than the stock market and it's about what money means to various people so you know to some what it means to a struck what it means to a wife what it means to a rich man um, all these things are different and none of them are what they seem um, at the beginning so it's a bit of a um, ghost you know like sometimes you're chasing an idea more than a fact so it's a moral tale about good and evil um, and about how far you'll go to cross the line, or if you cross the line, what do you lose, and is it worth it? Uh, so and, it's and kind we'll of talk about that. Chitrangra, how was it, uh, you know, for you? I mean, how did you come on board and uh, get convinced about being part of this project? Um, I uh, I honestly like the setup. I uh, I think Nikhil and Gaurav and of course Seth was already on board, Rohan, Radhika, the whole, uh, you know, crew together was just so interesting and of course the, the script was very interesting and I knew it was going to be a very exciting um, film to be, a part, to be part of. So yeah, that and plus I think, um, I mean, what Nikhil sort of told me, which was going to be my sort of a challenge, was that I had to make all the difference with my presence in the film more than anything else. So you have Shakun Kothari, which probably gets the best dialogues in the film. And then you need to be this woman who's married to a man like, like him in the film and, and hold her own, you know? So, so yeah, so that's the kind of thing that they were telling me. And um, I can't say much about my character because that'll give away the plot, uh, but it's interesting. It's, it's kind of integral and um, how do I say? <laughs> no, I don't want to say that. No, I don't want to say that. No, whatever we get to see, it seems like a pretty powerful trailer, isn't it? Like First impressions? Big one? Big blockbuster? Biggest for 2018? There you go. That's your first reaction. Rohan, this is your first film, I'm told? Yes, it is uh, my first film. Would you say, uh, you know, it was a bit of a risk for you? How do you look back at the decision? Um, you know, um, I just feel really pri privileged that I've got a chance to be in a film. You know, there's so many people out there who, whose dream is it to be like an, it is to be an actor and to be in the film industry and to get a first film. So for me, just to get a first film and get a fantastic film like this, I feel incredibly blessed and very just happy to be here, to be honest with you. So it was like a dream launch for me. And um, the story really resonated with me in a way because I think the guy, uh, the character I'm playing, Rizwan Ahmed, who comes from outside of Bombay, he's really the... Um, I guess you can call it the, the heart and a sense like, you know, you, you'll get a lot of people cheering for him because he's such a relatable character. In a, in a world which is kind of niche, you have this guy who's coming to this big city to pursue his dreams. And I think so, that's true for so many people. A lot of people come to Bombay to really pursue their dream and really make a name for themselves. So I think that's interesting. Yeah, a lot here as well. 
exactly. I'm sure. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah that, that indeed is the case. There would be a lot of people in the audience as well who would relate to your character. Yeah, absolutely. In the movie. That's true. To the big part. The biggest star <laughs> in the movie. Right? I'm told that you introduced Sev's character, Mr. Agarwal. How did you prepare for your role? See, so first thing is stock market is what we eat, drink, sleep. So it's a, it's a very normal, but I know it's a larger than life thing. It's a, you know, worldwide it is the biggest game in, in the world, not in town. So for us, it's nothing new. In fact, I was so excited that Nikhil and all they approached that they want to do it here. So I couldn't have been more, in fact, not only this project, but 10 more projects will be, will be very excited to do it. So this was one of the godsend opportunity. They said, I don't know the actual plot. I have not seen the movie. But I believe there are good guys, there are bad guys. And so is the market. Yeah. You know, there are good guys, there are very bad guys. So let's see. I mean, it looks very exciting. In fact, I am very excited to see the, the excitement it has created among our staff. They'll all go. If uh, just raise hands, all of you are going to see the movie? Of course. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. There you go, right till the top. Yeah. So. This is the kind of excitement this uh, uh, promo has created, and I'm sure it's a one-off uh, movies uh, from the this genre. I mean, actually nobody has. I mean, stock market is big; it makes headlines every day. But there's no movie. India is one of the fastest-growing economies in the yeah. world with a very, very uh, in-depth stock market, and we have one movie coming out on the stock markets. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but have there been movies in the past no, this is serious made stuff. on finance stock this is markets? This the first serious stuff. When did that movie come and go? I don't know. I, I, I didn't see it. Okay, okay, fine. So, the, so like, uh, like Mr. Agarwal is saying, this is the first serious attempt at a yeah. commercial project based on the stock markets, right? Yes. And so, uh, I think uh, Mr. Agarwal made a very interesting point. Uh, this movie is about the good guys and the bad guys in the market, uh, Sev. But you play a Gujarati businessman. How did you prep for the role? I saw your accent. By the way, you got the accent down to the yeah, T. Thank you. It's no, uh, I mean, there's many levels of preparation. I think the first idea was to kind of figure out what the person looks like. I mean, we could have done it at one, in one draft. It was a very overweight, um, you know, slightly balding, pan parag chewing, very crude kind of uh, businessman. And then in a second draft, it was a very polished suit wearing, you know, dashing dude. And, and we finally settled on something, I think, realistic. Um, it was interesting because he's a little older than I am, the character, so a mm. little bit of white in the hair, a little bit of weight, right. um, and this mustache that I'm really not a fan of personally, <laughs> but I had to have it for quite a long time. Um, I think it's an amalgamation of, of many personalities in business magazines, some of these guys. Um, there's something familiar if you just look at the picture. There were certain strong personalities that were attractive, so we drew from that. Um, and then create, and then the voice. The idea was to not have a caricaturish accent, but you know, definitely make it as as real as possible. Yeah, and you would uh, win a lot of Gujarati fans because I think you did a great job with your accent. Okay. Um, you two are the biggest stars from your respective sectors, right? And I was thinking, but you know, okay, so if you're having this conversation, I have to draw in some commonality that the two of you share. There are two things in common between the two between you two. One is that both of you started off your careers in the early 90s, if I'm not mistaken, yeah? You started off your career as well in the early 90s. But he's Nawab, mind you. <laughs> Are, but, but, <laughs> so yes, so maybe, but come on guys, he's worked very hard. He may, he may I mean, Seth, right? You worked very hard. Uh, and the second common thing is that both of you respect the one and only Mr. Warren Buffett. Wow. He is a, a big fan. He takes all of us down each year to the Berkshire Hathaway Annual General Meeting in Omaha, wow. which is really the Mecca where all world investors come together. 40,000 investors from across the world come together to hear two gentlemen, one an octogenarian, the other a nonagenarian. And the whole stadium is filled with people just asking them questions for six hours. I mean, do you think you should get, take them next year as yeah. well? So it's it, an event let, of let a lifetime. She is, yeah, you must, you must come next year. She's the only one who got an opportunity to interview Mr. Buffett one-on-one. -on -one. 
she is such a great anchor lovely yeah <laughs> okay this is not about me but thank you very much but yeah. but coming back to you know your reference points the reason i brought up warren buffett is because he's really the person who can influence a lot of people right uh, in just the way that he's lived his life his investment philosophy he was an influencing factor for you as well while you were preparing for this role no actually uh, i read in an interview that you know you no, had somebody read asked me if books. i if i know anything about the stock market so i said i've read a few books like a walk down wall street a random walk down wall street okay. and warren buffett's book yeah. um not the whole thing but you know bits of it okay. or quite a lot of it actually yeah. so one has a rough idea okay. um but as far as preparing the role you're asking me what the influences were yeah so there's you know there's yeah, your reference points i thought you know some of these guys would like you watch a lot of movies as well you told me uh wall street wolf of wall street we you know those are very shots. culturally different obviously okay. the, i think the stock market also represents um the nation in terms of um its ups and downs and and the kind of um volatility and the kind of character it has so america is obviously a different you'll have a different player in america like the great you know gordon gecko in in wall street is That's is right. a it's sort of um, a epitome and characterization of capitalism taken to an extreme wolf of wall street is excess in a crazy way but this is like a like a sexy gujarati aggressive businessman now those are not easy things to achieve in the same uh, breath yeah. um and there were many there were many influences of of famous personalities from from the business uh, community so this character is kind of an uh, amalgamation of a few of them not one person in particular but somebody's look and attitude and somebody's uh, way of speaking somebody's suit yeah. you know that kind of thing mannerisms and all yeah uh, seb i know i asked you this question earlier as well and mr agarwal i want your take on this too um uh, this is putting you in the spot but you know i all the three movies that i mentioned right they're all about showcasing um the gambling side of the stock market satta isko kehte hain right um i i i explain that to you as well that most of the movies made on stock markets um highlight stock markets you know as a casino you know a gambling circus where people are laying bets it's reckless it's irresponsible that's far from the truth yes you have that which adds to the volatility like you pointed out sir but mr agarwal the market has more depth i mean mr agarwal is a big proponent of investing in equities and creating long term wealth and he is a example himself a side of mr buffett on how he's become a billionaire right uh, by investing in the markets <laughs> that was 6 months back are <laughs> the market has its cycles you're yeah. going to become a billionaire again but yes. <laughs> yeah the market has uh, both yeah. sides in fact uh... Uh, unfortunately even uh, all the american movies also they have not they have not been able to show maybe it is not entertaining to show the good part of the good part of the market but i think uh, so it's not educative in fact it is scary they scare away the uh, uh, the uh, common public that all this dirty thing goes on but actually that is not even 1 or 2% of the market the real thing is the wealth creation which happens in like trillions every single multi billionaire today whether it is a amazon guy or buffett or bill gates they are all made up by the stock market that part somehow maybe it is not a good script for the people to have entertaining experience but that has not come out even from us and maybe it is an opportunity for bollywood to project that part of it maybe there it's are, an opportunity for all of you to collaborate on a movie like that sponsor i mean produced by you mr not <laughs> produced by me <laughs> bazaar too yeah but bazaar can, too. yeah if there are so many interesting characters here who have who have entertaining backdrops and yet they have created a lot of wealth mm. so somehow this bollywood has a way to project this but this this game is much bigger than the manipulations which is being always the center stage of most of the movies Rohan what is your character take away because i i know this is uh, really about uh, your character and self's character in the movie and how it evolves through time i mean yeah. that's the sense i got through the trailer no absolutely so what's like the end game uh, what does rizwan ahmed feel at the end of the movie about okay. his decision so I, without with, without giving too much away um i mean i i would want everyone to see it in the 26 and get and, and get that answer but um i will say this is like um I think Rizwan sees Shakun as his hero. You know, I mean, he wants to, he inspires to be like him. He inspires to work with, like work with him, and he inspires to everything the way Shakun's done. How he's come up in the world of business. He, 
he looks through the he looks at the same thing with his own life. So um, I don't know. You know, it's it's. I, I think there's a, there's a we we keep talking about this uh, uh, this thing in the film about how far will you go? Will you when you cross that line? Where do you draw the line? And um, there's another very interesting part of the trailer where we talk about emotions and maths. Somewhere, you know, there's this thing about businessmen being ruthless, cutthroat, only having like a mathematical mind, and I think Shakun kind of represents that. And here you have a guy who's young, who's good at maths, who wants to work and be like Shakun, but is a very emotional person. So I mean, perhaps we need. I mean, perhaps the line we're talking about is when do you stop being emotional and when do you start thinking with your mind? So I mean, those things are very interesting for me because you come with these big dreams and these big hopes, but then there's also a sense of how do I do it? And you can't be too emotional when making decisions in business. I mean, I can tell you because, um, funnily enough, incidentally, I wanted to, wanted to grow up to be an investment banker. That was my dream. I mean, when I was in university, I studied mathematics and econometrics, and my dream was to work with Goldman Sachs. And only when I was in university, I realized that, no, I don't want to do this. I want to pursue something in the arts. And here I am doing bazaar, playing a stockbroker. So I guess life takes a whole circle, right? Yeah. yeah. It does. Chitrangara, uh, you know, women bring in the emotional aspect to, you know, any central character. Uh, and so seeing these two play out their parts in the movie, um, how, I mean, what uh, dimension did you add to the plot of the, uh, plot of the film? Um, what did I bring in? I, I think I, uh, um, I think I'm the conscience. Okay. Of the film. Well said, yeah. I think she's, she's probably who's... Uh, so my character, Mandira, is the most pure in, in the whole setup. So whereas all these men and these women are living very exciting lives, <laughs> of, you know, really living it on the edge and crossing the line and all of that, Mandira Bain was um, in a very rich family. So usko shayad power or greed or ambition shayad itna zyada uski definition waisi nahi hai jaise uski husband ki hai like shakun who's really worked his way up you know he's made it on his own and he he wants to hold on really bad so so it's a very like bahut opposite hai dono husband wife and unki marriage mein kya hota hai iski wajah se uh, in differences ki wajah se so it's a very exciting angle that i bring in i think is the emotion is the family is the values is the moral uh, so she's 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 Mandira is that in the film. So yeah. And, and, the glamour. and I tried a little bit of glamour. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we did that. that. Always is the case. But um, you know, last couple of questions before we wrap up this discussion. Um, investing in movies is not a whole lot different to think about it from investing in the markets. Mr. Agarwal? You know, it's almost like being I, ahead I of think the curve. It is, I think it's safer in the market, I just want to say. I think with, with us, he, yeah. <laughs> I swear, it is safer in the market because you know you will end up getting between 14% and you can always choose debt over equity. So you'd still have, but here, we are in the hands of all you guys on the 26th of October and it depends on what mood you wake up in and you decide to watch our film. So please go watch our films <laughs> because you know what it feels like to bet on something. I think yeah? you have everybody's yeah, vote please. on that. Doesn't she? They have everybody's vote on that. Um, you, I mean, your sense? Do you think that um, calculated risks work in both sectors, uh, investing in the markets, investing in the movies? If you are ahead of the curve, you can get it right. Yeah, but see, I've been trained to invest in uh, stock market, but uh, if I just see from outside, investing in films is a low strike game. You know, like uh, the poverty. <laughs> one out of ten movies are successful, but yeah. the cost of all the ten movies are full. Yeah. You know, you put say fifty crores each movie, so five hundred crores to invest, but only one or two movies will uh, be successful, and you don't know which one will be successful. Yeah. Whereas in stock market investing, I mean, the guys are making money and uh, you can see uh, how much money they are making. So your strike rate can be very, very high. Mm -hmm. So this is the fundamental difference. But here there is a lot of glam, a lot of excitement. But this is fun, yeah. Yeah, this, this is, is fun. fun. So it's a, this is not investing. Yeah. In, uh, I mean, you can, of course, invest in production house. Mm -hmm. You can invest in uh, uh, a group of movies or you can be a small investor. Yeah. In fact, uh, one of the things I, I would think, if you go abroad anywhere, mm. there are only two, two ways of making movies. One is either Hollywood or Bollywood. Bollywood is unique all over the world. Yeah. I, whenever I go to Egypt, I go to Europe, I go to anywhere. Uh, you know, I was, we were in Israel. Yeah. Yeah, the, we, one of my friends, we said, this guy is Shah Rukh Khan's friend. There were 
20 30 girls who took photographs with him <laughs> that popularity so yeah. what i'm saying is there there has to be a way to make money yeah. out of Bo bollywood mm -hmm. and i'm still figuring out how to make money out of bollywood ah so we still not form found formula you haven't found a formula no say if you want to help him so I, I have a problem as well. I wish I knew, but I think distribution is a, is quite a key. I mean, a lot of people, as you say, love our films all the way in the south of the Mediterranean. You know, from India to Spain, that whole belt. So if we can, and with China as well. Yeah. So I think it's growing. It's growing tremendously. I think if we had all the information on a movie, it would be quite a safe bet. If you knew what the script was. You don't think it's was. a calculated risk investing in a movie? No, no I mean I don't know if people invest in a particular movie or they invest in the production in general. Mm -hmm. If you had all the information, if you read the script, if you knew what the star yeah. cast was, who the producer was, I think you can generally take a calculated risk at the opening, or you know what kind of what kind of thing it would. Yeah, create. I think you. It's in. Technical terms is very difficult to calculate the risk-adjusted return that you can get yes, on absolutely. the investment that you make yeah. in a film versus, of course, in a stock. But yeah. even though the film pundits get the figures pretty scarily correct, really? yeah, they'll tell you roughly what you'll open at and if what it are picks they up. Oh, I can't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I think another thing privileged which is, information. Yeah. Another thing which is going to make a huge difference in the next 10, 15 years mm -hmm. is the internet. The global yeah, availability, true. without any distribution, you have a distribution all over the world. That I mean, can change the game. That is bound to change the game with the Netflixes or all the OTTs which are coming in. Mm. You, you say have, distribution. Yeah, that's a global getting distribution. Online. Right. Getting online. Right. Cutting through the yeah. distribution. So, and in a very organized fashion. Mm. So, I think that is going to be a huge game changer for Bollywood. Which is why Sev did Sacred Games, right? You, you'll well. see this movie. Uh, you'll see this movie will be watched by many, in many parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Because I, I'm not seeing the movie, but if the concept is actually about the yeah. Mumbai stock market or the stock market in general, if uh, dialogues are st strong, it will be seen in many parts of the world. No, I agree. Yeah. I, also because it's unique, right? It's the first movie on the Indian stock market. We've not really had a movie like this. And, uh, do either of you invest in equities? You do. Your answer said that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're very active in the stock markets? Where's Kunjal? <laughs> what? My, my accountant has come. Here, yeah, there he is. He said, "This Hi. one." I want. He said, "I want to come." Do you today. get him okay. to invest in equities? Yeah. He does. Oh, nice. What part of his portfolio is in equities? That is ten percent. What? Come it? on. You need to change that, Mr. Agarwal. You talk thing. on every business news channel. Yeah, yeah. Get Sev to invest more in equities. Rohan, what about you? I don't have enough money yet, unfortunately. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay fine, fair enough. So, Chitrangada here. I, I have about, um, I'm 70% equity, uh, I'm 30% oh, yeah. debt. Great, there you go. That, is that good? Is that a good thing? Very good. Yeah? Very I, don't, good. I don't know. So, I so just both I have of you one now question. have to convince Seth Can to I go from 10% to 70% of his portfolio. Please do that. Mr. Agarwal, <laughs> he's the biggest proponent of why one should invest in equities in long equity. term. Why it's not as risky as it seems, better than debt. No, but I have one debt. question. Like, yeah. what's going to happen to the market now? When are we, when are we coming back <laughs> to 38? Yeah, That's right my now question. We are <laughs> like, uh, when, when, are we, when are we touching 40? When are we going to 30? I wanted to reach 40, I was told. Huh? Never. You think done? Done. 40. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm like, I'm 70% equity, you know. I need to know. <laughs> I really need to know. No, you can't lie to me. No, are you telling me? That's a question, yeah. Convince them to invest more in equities. Convince them to go 100% in equities. <laughs> <laughs> really? No, I'm we, sitting here. But we don't want to tell them like, you know, done. How can we commit to that? We're not saying that, you know, markets can be controlled or orchestrated. So, yeah, I mean, markets have their cycles. You have to ride yeah. through the cycles. Yeah. Give a more wise Yeah, uh, but, you know, approach. I, I started uh, buying stocks in 1980. And that time index was 100. In my uh, 35, 40 years of journey, I have seen this index going from 100 to 36,000. Whoa. 360 times and I don't see any reason why in next 40 years so out of that how many years you'll be into the market I don't know but I think you should you'll be so in the market for at least next 50 60 years 60 years at least no, so, I just want five years yeah so short sir that's it so you know five. yeah yeah five is also good <laughs> what I'm saying is the direction is only up and it is it is going to be giving you 
I mean, you, you keep your expectations low at about 15, 20, 12 to 15 percent. I thought 14 to 16 is what they always come and yeah, sell. So same, no? More or less same number, yeah. So you'll do well. Okay, thank you. Does so that much. convince you? Does that convince you? Yes, I've always been convinced. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Uh, again, Bazaar is out on 26th October. Uh, this has been an interesting conversation, as interesting as it could get, given that all of us come from different walks of life. But thank you very much for being a great audience. Uh, do watch the movie on 26th October. And once again, I believe all of you will be in the theaters that day. Yes or no? Yes. There you go. Thank you. Thank the movie's already a hit. <laughs> <laughs>